Living in a tiny home has really helped me be more present. There's no room for excess or unnecessary objects. Everything is very curated, very intentional. My name is Sung Yu. I'm 40 years old and I live in a tiny house in Santa Monica, California, and I pay $1,600 per month. Welcome to my tiny house in Santa Monica, California. I'm a designer and entrepreneur, and I have a children's toy brand called Big Little Universe. Before living in the tiny house, I lived in New York City for over 18 years. I was paying $4,500 a month for an apartment. So I initially moved to California with a partner. That relationship did not work out. And so after that time, I had two places, one in New York and one in California. It was pretty quickly where I decided it was time to get grounded again with my own values. So I made the tiny house my primary residence. I was actually in Rome and I found the space on hot pads and thought it was a scam. <laughs> I hadn't seen anything like it. The photos were posted. It was also very hard to decipher. They had a phone number on there, so I actually ended up calling it and someone did pick up and the interview process was also extremely intense. It was more intense than a regular apartment building. I asked for a video interview to be able to see the space, but even then I was like, it could not be there. This could all be AI for all I know. So I had someone come and check that the space actually existed. Living in Santa Monica has a lot of benefits. I love being close to the ocean. Being able to go on hikes and have access to the outdoors has been really amazing. Living in a tiny house has not only provided my own space, but I'm easily saving a few thousand dollars a month, which has been extremely beneficial as well. There's only been a couple small aspects that I've added to the house, which are small accessories and wall mounted hooks. Otherwise, it's pretty much exactly how it came. The style is very minimal and designed to be energy efficient as well as sustainably built. The house does not require any heat or AC, so I don't have any heating or cooling, but the temperature is regulated by concrete panels, which is water resistant, weatherproof, and extremely durable. I do use a small portable heater in the winter if it is colder weather. I think the most difficult part about moving into a tiny house, there's very limited storage. So having very intentional objects that you've selected that are functional as well as high quality has been a really amazing curation process. You know, narrowing down like technology was pretty simple. I felt like going through different objects or tools was also pretty simple because you come to realize you really don't need that many things. There is literally a container that I have under my sink that I spent at least a couple months looking for because I needed something to be a specific size and material. I think patience is going to be one thing that could be tested living in a tiny house. I think that the main misconception of living in a small space is that it's not possible, but I think it's one of the most amazing gifts and experiences that I've had. When you walk in, this is the main area, which is my work area as well as living room. You see my open closet. I guess you could also say it's a walk-in closet. I spend majority of my day sitting right in this space with my laptop, and this is where majority of my work is done. 
I'm pretty particular about how I curate my wardrobe because I have so little space. Everything has a versatility or a purpose. The position of the home and the amount of natural light in this house is what really helps the space feel a lot larger than it really is. The kitchen area is where majority of the storage is. I love tools and I love high quality tools. So I have different types of scissors that I've collected throughout the years because it's just a great tool to have. I cook pretty much every day. This particular tiny house did not have a full kitchen. How I solve for that is with a double burner that sits outside of the home. It functions extremely well and is completely sufficient to be able to cook. I think that the process of cooking is actually simplified because I need to be extremely efficient about how I prep ingredients. I'm also very aware of exactly what ingredients and how much are left over in my fridge. So in terms of guests, maximum, I've had two people stay in the outdoor space, but indoors I've only had one guest at a time. To the right of the kitchen is my bathroom, also very minimal and has open storage, which allows for more space. The bathroom sink face is one of my favorite features in the house. It's made of a recycled rubber. To the left of the living room and kitchen is my bedroom. The bedroom is my sanctuary, it's wonderful, and it's a full-size bed. The plywood that surrounds the bed creates this really serene and warm environment. The light in the room is the main light that's completely adjustable to many different settings, which is also a very comfortable and soothing experience. The position of the bedroom allows me to sleep north, which is really great feng shui. I have no regrets about moving into a tiny house. What I was seeking was to feel grounded and to feel completely okay on my own. I think that's what really helped that transition not feel so jarring or difficult. There were definitely challenges, but realigning with what my values really were and what is like most significant in my life was what helped that transition. I think for those who are curious about tiny house living, the first thing I would do is to observe and take a look at your belongings and what really has meaning in your life and what is just a nice to have. I would start there and start to evaluate how you could potentially transition into a tiny house. I've thought a lot about designing tiny homes. So my longer term plans is to build a tiny house community. I really, really love the experience of living in this space and the benefits of learning intentional living. I would love to share that by building a community in the future, but for now, I'm not leaving. <laughs>